catch up time. And finally, we've been allowed to fish some matches again. So we both got some matches to talk about and it's been right weird. I mean, I was so looking forward to get back into fishing after the, the long break that we've all had. And it's been right disappointment since it's still be ending. <laughs> but I've still fished plenty of matches, so I've got a lot to, to catch up on that. I think, how long have we been fishing now? Probably about three or four weeks. Yeah, I'm going to say three or four weeks we've been fishing. Yeah, we have. Three weeks we've been back at it. And I fished loads and loads of matches, so I've got lots to catch up on. And my first one was, um, my first match after lockdown was on the Wednesday, and I went to Fairswood, which is Keith Owen's place, which is, it's normally my winter venue. So it was the first time I've actually managed to go there when it's been, not summer fishing, but better. I mean, when you can feed some bait, when there's a lot of fish feeding. And it was really, really good. I've drawn... What did I draw? I drew peg six on, on the big lake. It's got two lakes at Keith, Little Lake, Big Lake. And I've drawn peg six, which is a, it's a good carpy area. And it's an area I quite fancied on the day because the wind was blowing my way. It just looked dead good. And it was solid. It was really, really good. I had a nice day catching on pellets on the bottom. I caught some fish, shallow maggots, and actually mugged quite a few fish as well. It was the first mugging fish of the year. I had a lovely day just fishing sharks. It's a, a bit of a pokey corner, that one. So I've just had a nice day fishing short. So maggots up and down and pellets on another line. And I had 160 pounds and I won my first match. So it was going good. So that was it. I was going to win every single match of the year after that. But it, it didn't quite work <laughs> out that way. So after that, we went to Heronbrook. Uh, I'm not going to talk about Heronbrook a lot, though, because Heronbrook, my first match at Heronbrook was on the Big Lake. And that was the last match that we filmed for our, our members live, which has gone out already. Yeah, it's gone out already, that one. So have a look at that if you want to. Uh, look at that in a bit more detail. I had an enjoyable match that day, but a bit frustrating. I should have done things different, but we won't go into that too much. Um, straight after Heronbrook, we were on to Partridge for the, what was the first one? The first one at Partridge was a Maven match this, and I drew on Cyanide Strait on Lake Six, which in the summer I'd fancy. Last year, it was mega. Lake Six was the one to be on because it's probably, I don't know if I'm right, but it, it, I think it's got more carp in than the others. There's a lot of these like two to four pound carp that it's just easier to catch. They boost your waist up quick. They're really, really good. So normally I'd fancy it. So it's not the best area. It's on the, the middle of the back straight. One, four, one, four, one, one, four, one, one, four, one. I was on right in the middle of this back straight, which to be fair, Lake Six, you do need to be towards the ends, but I still fancied it for a day's fishing and you never know. But the issue was that it's just, it gone a little bit cold. We had an easterly come in um, and no carpet feeding. So it went right weird. And it was a sort of a kick up the bum for me, if you like, that I wanted to be really aggressive and make things happen. And it's not there yet. You know what I mean? I, I'm, we're doing it a lot of fishery as we go, trying to be really positive to, to win the match. And it's having a massively detrimental effect on your peg. And that, that's not to the extreme I did it at Partridge. I went with hard pellets across and I went with maggot short um, and what did I fish in the edge? I fished maggots down one edge and micros and expanders down the other. And it was crap. I mean, you literally couldn't get a bite, which because this easterly had come in, it had just knackered it. And the fishing were really, really, really difficult. I think we had, I reckon I had five fish in the first two and a half hours. It's just really nice. It was like fishing in January, really, really tricky fishing. Fortunately, they had an arrival late on, caused quite a few fish short on maggots late on. I think it had 70 pounds. So really nice days fishing for F1s, but miles and miles off the pace. I think it was weird where I was because I was on, say, 141. Connor was next to me on 143. Connor can't draw save his life. He's always on that bit. Poor lad. He's beat me. He's had 80 pounds. And then the kid next to him's had 90 pounds. You could tell the fish were very much 149, 151 area, which that's wherever the wind goes at Partridge. That's what they do. But even so, we were miles off the pace. I think Chris Weeder won that one. Did we do in that one? Yeah, Chris Weedle won that one off 101, which again, win the area of pool one, and he's, he's got job done with. I think he's got a load of fish on maggot shallow, as he does. Yeah, so that was my first big qualifier sort of thing was at, at Partridge. Oh, I'll tell you what else went. Um, before that, I'm going to skip back. We haven't mentioned that. Morelands, I had one at Morelands. That was my first qualifier. It was a Saturday at Morelands. That was the first fish show of the year. And that one, I actually felt I had a little chance. In the, I, I don't know Morelands at all. I've been there less than half a dozen times so it's not a venue I know but I drew 13 12 13 13 on Medipool which in fact it was it was 13 the points peg 12 which used to be the peg so as soon as I drew a phone down because he knew Morelands quite well he said yeah 12 used to be ridiculous used to be the game over peg and I was just off that so 12's on the point as it, as it comes round just out the bowl but it was an area that after speaking to Grant as well that the fish could definitely end up in 
I mean, whether Meadowpool was going to be the right one on the day, I didn't know. Bankpool does tend to, to take the mick a little bit, and Silverpool was the one I fancied for um, an f one day, but as it materialised, Bankpool was the one to be on. That won the match. Who won the match, Rich? Rich knows. He was next to him. Who was it, Ben? Um, don't know his name. Don't know his we'll come up with that. Rich will stick it on. Anyway, um, Ben, someone won that one with £118. Something like that. He doesn't, he doesn't want to talk about it because he didn't like it. He was next to him. That's a bit of a theme, but we'll come on to that in a minute. <laughs> um, what did I do? I had a horrible day. It was, I had a day of two halves. I didn't have a bite for the first two hours, or maybe some small skimmers, but the carpet in front of us, the, there was me, Grant was opposite. There were quite a few of us in that area that were getting indications. They were catching a few opposite to start. The fish were definitely over there. And then they came over to our side and we caught a few later on. I think me, Matty Dawes was on 11 and Phil Moore. No, I forget his name. I'm useless with names today. I'm not with it, blaming my daughter. Ben Lockwood, that's who won it, see? But anyway, we all started catching a few fish late on, but it was typical carp fishing. And again, because they'd had this easterly wind, it had proper kicked their arses. And they, were, they weren't visible. You could just, you could see an odd fish. You could tell there were loads of fish in the area, but you couldn't get a bite. They were horrible. You regularly had to see three or four fish swim past and you try and mug one. They wouldn't even look at it because they're not responding to noise. They're, they're just moody. But we managed to nab a couple by fishing. I caught a few on maggots, a few on pellets, just setting your rig this deep and flicking it about. We caught a few fish late on for £51. I got beat, Matty beat me for my section, eight quid section. It Matty beat me by about four out, so I wasn't impressed with that. But that was the, the introduction to the big qualifiers and things going on. So, so after that was on Partridge. After Partridge, oh, it's been rubbish since. I went to Heron Rook next and I drew 29 bridge, which is utter garbage, especially with the wind blowing out of it as it was. It's the MPEG on bridge, but not where you want to be not very very deep very nasty um didn't catch anything on that one i threw back 30 pound with an hour to go and gone home and what else have we been rich after that i'll tell you what i'm going to do yeah let's have a bit of glory blogging as well in that i fished the silverfish festival at birch house lakes that was run by rich and his mate james p and we did we've done a, um, a skimmer fishing video up there with soft pellets so a while ago we did that and it was really really good so we were looking forward to potential carnage it was very, very good. It turned out brilliant. In fact, my two days were, the first day was I drew a right good peg. I drew the peg that I'd done the feature on and it's in this bit of a bay. And I honestly think that the bigger skimmers seem to be hanging around this bay for spawning reasons, whatever else. They're just loitering in this area. So I had a brilliant day catching a few fish on uh, pellets long. And then I literally fish short with maggots all day, just loose feeding maggots with the odd little ball of ground bait to tighten them up. And I had a phenomenal day catching these big like, 12 to pound 12 ounce to 12 pound 12 ounce to a pound and a half skimmer short uh, with the odd one on a top kit as well a sneaky little line that we put into nick and odd big fish as they came in and had 60 pound or so 59 pounds something of, of silvers on the first day which with it being a weight festival was it was phenomenal you know what i mean I, I definitely i felt i fished right but i was definitely in the area with the bigger fish which was a massive 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 advantage and because of how it was fishing, it was really, really hard fishing. Not hard, it was tricky fishing with only small fish feeding for all of the areas because it was really high pressure. It was bright sunshine. It was freezing at night. We were getting about minus two to minus four at night, but it was bright, still sunshine all day with going up to about 13, 14 degrees. So it was really nice, but it couldn't be worse for skimmer fishing at that sort of thing. So the second day came around, I think I had a at around the 30 pound lead. I think 33 pound had been second on the first day. So with it being a weight one, it was just a tick over, catch a few fish. I mean, I needed to catch 10 to 15 pound on the second day. Um, I drew opposite, not in an area I fancied, but instead of just getting some bites, um, I had a busy day catching roach again, short and long. I think I had 25 pound on a roach the second day, which again, lovely, lovely days fishing. Um, and that was enough to clinch festival as well. I think I ended up with 85 pound. Andy came second. It was a, a three-way effort on that one. So Andy's came and he's been, I think we both had the same results. On the first day I won the match, Andy was third. And the second day Andy won the match and I was third. So we were first and second in that one. Took all the pennies home and Rich stole all the money off us, but that's for another story. Uh, lastly, where have I been this weekend? I've been to Partridge again. Yeah, <laughs> I've been to Partridge again and I've drew Kobe 6 yet again. And this time, not a bad peg, I've drawn 167, which is the first peg over the bridge. 
which I was happy to be on Kobe 6 because I felt I knew how it was fishing and it was potentially a hundred pound day. So I thought that's that's doable on a lot of areas. Not, however, where I drew on 167. It's, it's a peg that often if the wind was, it was easterly on the day. So let's say westerly, southwesterly, it'd be blowing down there. You'd run to it. You'd really fancy it because you've got a bit more room. Um, on the day, however, it was easterly again. So I couldn't have been further away from the fish, I don't think. And it, it showed in the weights. I think I ended up with 50 pound of, of scratting about fish. Keenan was next to me, I had 60. Lee was next to me, I had 80. The fish are very much up that top end of Lake Six on that day. But that said, I don't think the lake had a chance of winning anyway. I think Martin Stokes went on to win that one off Willow with 140 something pound. So fair play to him, he did well there. He had a, a lovely net of F1s and cast a shallow, but for whatever reason, definitely the early ones at Partridge, all the pegs that you seem to want, with the exception of Kobe 5, you never seem to want to be on one to six in the early ones. Dead weird, the brilliant lakes full of fish, but it's always one of the others that seems to chuck up a weight. So that's how it went on the day. Last one I want to talk about is me match at Woodlands Thirsk. That I had my first golden reel event at Woodlands Thirsk. This Saturday just gone, which again, as someone I've not been for, for years and years and years and years is Woodlands. So it was nice to go and do some carp fishing. So that's what you're looking for at Woodlands. It's all proper carp. Uh, and I've drawn, I've drawn a weird one. I've drawn four on Skylark, which before the draw, they all said you need M pegs. It's the way it is on them sort of lakes. Tight pegging, fish go to the end. But I quite fancied where I was. It was sort of the windy end, or the, the ripple was coming down that way. There was very little ripple. And there was a few fish about. And actually, the last time I was at Woodlands, which was about seven or eight years ago, I'd drawn peg six on Skylark and actually qualified for fish show off it. So I thought maybe that's a half a chance at, at picking a few fish off. The way it turned out, it, it was a nice day. I've literally sat there with a mugging rig, yeah, either on my pole or a mugging waggler in my hand all day. I've not fed a thing all day and I've had about 13 or 14 bites. I've missed a few and I've ended up with 10 fish, which went 80 pounds, which that, that managed to win me section, which saying that that beat the MPEGs as well on my lake, which I, I was quite happy about that. But the match was absolutely paralyzed by Ryan Bennett. Ryan, got it right. Ryan Bennett, who drew next to our mate Rich, which is, tends to be the place you want to be at the minute. Um, but on the favoured corner. Once he drew, what was he on, Rich? 36, 37? 38, I think. 38 on part. Whatever the, the end peg on Partridge Lake, as soon as he drew that at the start, they said it's unlikely he was going to get beat there. And he did a serious job on everyone. He had £190, which I think obliterated the match by about 50, 60, 70 pounds, something stupid. So fair play to him. He's a nice lad. He puts the, the time in Ryan as well. So it's nice to see people like him that, that put the miles in getting through. And that has been about it. So a busy month back on it, but so other than a bit of a silverfish victory, that, that's been it for me. Commercial fish has been rubbish. In fact, I might even swap. I might be a feeder fisherman. Let's go to feeder fishing or silver fishing. This commercial lack's overrated. <laughs> but no, we've got a very, very busy, busy month ahead. Yet again, we've got millions and millions of matches the next month, all commercial based. And fingers crossed, we'll get a bit of luck soon and start drawing some better pegs. We've got to be, got to be due one very, very shortly. Thank <laughs> you.